If you're wondering how to create really high quality online courses, programs, and you're looking to record them yourself from home, keep watching this video. One of the best tools that I've found, having created over a thousand mini courses, masterclasses, online programs, webinars, all kinds of different training over the years for the How to Build a Brand channel. Also, I have a global movement called One Drop Movement. So I, I've got a lot of content that I'm creating all of the time. Even when I create a tool or a download or a worksheet, or a couple of days ago, I created 10 mantras for people to really get Get into your confidence and step out fearlessly and be fearlessly visible. I created that a couple of days ago and I still made a training video to go with it. So it's really key that if you're going to create an experience where you are building your personal brand and you want to be the voice behind what it is that you're creating, you're creating a legacy, then you do want to be creating as much video as possible. And I, I, right now I'm recording this on iMovie, which I've got on my, my laptop. I've got a MacBook Pro, so I'm just recording this on here. Having said that, uh, I've also used my husband's laptop PC. And as long as you've got a good camera or a good webcam, something that's of good quality, then uh, you know that's going to really help with whatever online technology you use, for example, to be able to record it. So yes, you can use Zoom if you want to record your online trainings and you want to create something. You know, if you create it on Zoom, that's absolutely fine. But if you want an even better quality picture, then I'm going to walk you through how I use StreamYard. So out of all the things that I've used over the years, StreamYard, I believe, is the best thing that I'm using right now. Uh, there's It's a freemium model, so you can get a free account. You can start... Uh, straight away by creating content. You you can uh, create them to go live or you can create them just for your own personal use. You can all, all also create them. So you film them now and then release them later. You can't do that on a free account though. And you'll also find that with a free StreamYard account that they'll have their branding on the, uh, on the content. So it's worth investing to go up to that next level. Uh, there are three levels in total. At the highest level, I don't think that a new beginner who is starting to create content or starting to go live needs to invest at that highest level. If you want to upgrade later, then I then do it later. I'd suggest that you go for the middle option, which is I believe around £20 or $20 a month. And you'll find that it, you can do a lot within that. You can stream, if you want to stream, you can stream to multiple channels. I think with the £20 a month one, you can stream to three different channels. So I, I delivered a summit, a live summit last week. It was a nine hour online summit to celebrate International Women's Day, which at the point that of recording this, that was just last week. And uh, so I live streamed for nine hours through StreamYard. I had multiple people that I was bringing up onto the screen. I was able to uh, pre-record the whole thing, although I delivered it live. I now have the recording so that I can sh still stream it as if it is live and I can just set it and forget it. And that's one of the beautiful things about it. If you are delivering your content into a Facebook group, for example, or you've got several groups and you want to deliver the same content or you want to have it go out via your YouTube channel at the same time as your uh, LinkedIn profile at the same time as your Facebook profile, then you could have it streaming to all three of those channels at the same time. You can also stream just directly straight into a group. So if you've sold a program and you want to deliver training and say you're going to do a live Q&A once a week or once a month, you could host it via StreamYard and, um, and stream it straight into the group that you're you're wanting to host that content in so that that content is then there you haven't got to record it and then upload it and then stream it into there so you know it can stream directly in so it can save a lot of time if you are just recording your online programs and courses though you'll find that it's very, very simple to do. And all you do is record without going live. So I'm going to take you through how to do it. I'm actually going to set up 
a, a stream now and show you behind the scenes. So I'm going to use a different technology to do that. I also have screen flow so that I can be recording my screen at the same time. Otherwise, you won't see what I'm seeing. And, uh, and, and by the way, you can use Loom. There's lots of different screen softwares that will capture the screen as you're um, you're doing the things you want to do and you want to capture it so it's also another uh, technology that I recommend ScreenFlow is brilliant you can do so much with ScreenFlow uh, but usually the only technologies that I use are iMovie because I can edit things very quickly I can edit this straight away and I can have the idea uh, to, to create a, a video or a training in the morning I can create the training right now and by Within an hour, <laughs> I can have that um, created, edited, and up into my YouTube channel. So it's a very fast way of doing that. Uh, this recording will also then become a podcast. It'll also become other, uh, other content, other things. Okay, so I'm going to take you across to my other screen now. I'm going to use ScreenFlow to record that, and then I'm going to import that into here and make this training video for you. So let's go across to my other screen now. So what I want you to do is before you go and create your stream yard, before you start getting into your stream yard, is to think about your content. So if you've already planned out your content, you've already got your training, you're already ready to go. My advice would be, as I've done here, so as you can see, I've got a, a One Year No Fear podcast that I'm creating on how to deal with trolls and spammers as you build your brand. It's something that's come up quite a lot in the last couple of weeks on my One Year No Fear mastermind. So I'm I'm just working through a process, a 12 month visibility process with the people that are going through that. And I know that the fear of being trolled or the fear that spammers are going to um, you know, put nasty things or horrible things or question what you're saying. I know there's a lot of fear and anxiety around that. So I'm creating a podcast around that. As you can see, I've got my podcast script that's there. But what I've done is I've gone through that script and I've made in bold any of the things that I think are going to be good to put on the screen to enhance their learning and to keep them engaged. Because whether you're going to stream this live or create this just for you and the people that you're serving and people have to pay a membership fee or they have to give you their information in return for being able to access the course, I think it's a really good thing that StreamYard has which Zoom doesn't where you can start overlaying questions you can put your own branding on things so uh, the first step with um, creating really good engaging training I believe is to have things that appear on the screen uh, as you are talking so what I did was I created a, a separate word document that I've just taken like 10 so I, I, I didn't do it uh, there's no 10 there because 10 is a prime number or whatever. That just happens to be how uh, the amount of prompts that are perfect for this particular episode. They're the things that stood out to me. So I've just taken them into a separate document and you'll see why in a minute. And it, it is so much easier for you when you get into StreamYard. It's easier for you if you have done this little bit of planning at the beginning. Even if there's only two things you want to put on there, you might only have your web address on there, for example. So I'm just going to take Take you across to StreamYard now and let's let's begin to construct this so that you can either just do this training just for you or you can stream it out live which I like to do I think if I'm going to film content anyway I might as well stream it live and have people benefiting from the experience and then that's also a way that I can uh, promote what I'm creating. So the first thing you're going to do is go to uh, streamyard.com. Um, I do have a referral link as well. You can um, get your, once you sign up for StreamYard, you'll be able to get into your own referrals area. So you'll be able to refer people to um, you can, uh, you know, you can save money on your account by referring people, for example. So um, I'll copy and paste this into the YouTube um, description with this video. Obviously, you don't have to do that. But, you know, if you want to help me uh, while I'm helping you, you can do that. So the first thing is to go into StreamYard. Now, I'm going to go to Broadcasts. Um, now, what will happen is you can um, connect your destinations. You can connect different accounts to things. 
I've got a bunch of accounts that I don't really use anymore. And I, I've created a, a new Facebook profile since coming back to use StreamYard again. I used to use StreamYard all the time. And then we decided that we wanted to run things webinar style, a bit more interactive. So we started to use Zoom instead. But then when I ran that um, summit last week, it just made sense to use StreamYard and stream it out. So I've just come back to StreamYard. So I would need to reconnect any of these that I want to um, connect up, but there's quite a few of them that I don't feel like I need to. All you've got to do is click on destinations on the left hand side and you can connect. See all these ones that are greyed out there, ones that I haven't connected up again, but I've connected my own um, page and profiles, the things that I do use often. So you can just add a destination, go and find whichever you want and you just literally follow the process to do that. Um, there's other things that the account does, but I'm not going to go into those. What we're going to do is we're going to go to broadcasts and we're going to create a new broadcast. So whether you whether you choose to do this live, you can. So you can live stream it. You can just record it so it goes in the studio and no one will see it unless you show them. Or you can deliver it as a live online webinar. They didn't have this feature at the time that we went across to use Zoom. This is this has happened since that, that you know the time lapse in between. So if you just want to record and you don't want to live stream anything, you're literally just giving it a title and create the recording. So as soon as you press go, it will start to do that for you. I'll do one just very quickly now. So I'm going to take, I'm going to copy and paste this. This is why it's so much easier if you, um, if you just have that document that's already there because you can copy and paste. So let's create recording. You'll see that we're entering the studio. And once you get into the studio, that's where you can start putting everything together. So you'll want to enable all of this stuff. Uh, uh, so let's put this here. So I'm just going to put the brand builder or you can see, actually, you can see that that has um, taken that off the screen. I don't think that will happen when we get there, but it is best to, you know, whatever you see here as a title that you can give to yourself, um, you can guarantee that that's what's going to appear on the screen. So we're going to press enter the studio. So it's exactly exactly the same process whether you do this to live stream or to do a webinar or to just film it yourself. The only difference is that instead of it saying record it will say go live. So uh, as you can see I've still got all the graphics in here from the International Women's Day Summit so what you can do is you can click on brand and you can go and upload your own graphics. So you can see I've got law of brand attraction stuff here, I've got the um, ripple fest, <laughs> you know I've done things for other people as well. Um, so I'm just going to use this one live with Sammy Blindell the brand builder. OK, so that's my graphics. I'm now going to enter the studio. So I'm going to add to stream. So I'm going to add me to the stream. The beautiful thing is that if you are um, having other people that are coming to join you for interview, um, you can have, you know, they'll all be lined up in here. I can't remember how many you can have. I think it's eight on the £20 a month one. Um, so last week when I was recording, at one point I had, you know, a lot of speakers backstage who... Um, were all waiting to come on. They will not be seen on screen unless you um, put them on there. They'll all say um, add to stream. So you'll have all the people, they'll be behind here, they'll say add to stream. They won't appear and you won't hear them unless you add them to the stream and you can just remove them again. Exactly how I've just shown you there. It's very easy to add and remove people. All right. So the other thing is banners. So you can create banners. So let's delete some of these because these are banners that I was creating live in the moment as I was interviewing people. If they said something that I thought was really powerful, then I created a banner and put that up on the screen. So I'm going to create some, as you can see, I've got some of my things there. I'm going to leave that there because welcome to the show uh, or welcome to the stage. I interview a lot of people. Um, so that's my template. All I've got to do is amend the name. So it's good you can do that. So I, all I've got to do is go in here and then I just amend the name to whatever I want. So let's create some banners and I'll, I'll show you why you want to create those banners shortly. So, um, so the first thing we're going to do is is we're going to put the title as a banner. So I'm going to put that in there. So let's add that as a banner. And then we're going to take all of these one by one and we're going to copy and paste them into the banners. 
And the reason we're going to do that is because as we're talking, you can then have these appear. So it's good if you, if you know you're going to have things like this um, to, to share, it's good to put them in here already. And that way it's all done and you're not having to mess about when you're actually live or while you're recording. You, you know, it's less editing to do if you do that. And also it's really engaging. So when people are watching you and you've got different things that are appearing on the screen, you're training them to stay tuned because so they don't go and start making a cup of tea and they don't, uh, you know, get distracted or, you know, listen to you while they're going for a walk or something. Right. I mean, if you want them to do that, then that's OK. <laughs> but if you if you want them to be engaged then you're going to want to um, put things on the screen. You can also do that through uh, closed captioning, which is basically subtitling. So you, could, you can add all of that stuff to, to your training as well. But what I love about it is it's automatically branded. So you've got all the branding on here that you want. Now, again, if you want to change the way that it uh, shows on the screen, if you come up to brand color, so you can change your brand color. These are my brand colors for how to build a brand. So um, I'm going to keep them as they are. But as you see with my name appearing there, if you haven't got a comment on the screen, if you haven't got a banner, because um, if you're live and somebody types a comment in, you can also choose to show that you can you if somebody says, um, you know, I love the work you're doing <laughs> or something, you can you can click on that and it, that'll appear on the screen like my name is appearing there now. But if you haven't got a banner up, it'll always revert back to being your name again. So um, so have a look at the screen, keep watching the screen and you'll see that the way that my name is appearing is changing. So you can decide how you want things to appear. So if I click back on banners now, so you see that's how the banners will appear when I bring them up onto the screen. So you can choose how you want it to display. I quite like that one actually. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna have this one, all right? So now I've got my banner I've uh, uh, so I, I've got my banner style. I've got all of my banners that are sitting in there. You can, if you want to, um, move these things around if you want to. Um, I'm just I'm not going to worry about that. I'll just put that at the top there, so I know these are the only ten things that I'm going to be displaying. But I'm going to hide that for now because when I record, I want to be able to then bring that onto the screen when I start recording. So I'm going to start this process now. Oh, by the way, you're also seeing how these things can display as well. Obviously, there's only you on the screen right now. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. It's going to be <laughs> just you. But if you do have other people that you want to interview or you want to bring other training, other trainers in, um, you can choose how they display and it just shows you exactly as it shows on the icon there. So it's very, very straightforward. So we're just going to hit record. And you can see the settings here, local recordings. Um, so I'm just going to edit that. Okay, I don't need to edit that because I've got no one else that's on here. So I'm just going to press not yet um, because there's no, if you've got other people on here, then they can also be saving it to their own machines or laptops as well. All right, so we're just going to press record and record. So you can see up here that um, all I've got to do is press end recording when I'm ready to end the recording. Um, so I'm going to record this right now. You're going to see me record it. If you want to skip this uh, and you don't want to watch the show, <laughs> you don't want to watch how I do it, then um, you can just skip to the part where I then um, uh, take you to the end. So if you look in the comments in the description underneath this training video, I will, once I've finished recording, I will put the uh, the times that I'm actually delivering the training so you can see if you want to go to that time and skip what I'm about to share, you can. And then I'm just going to edit this so that all this bit is out and all I'm left with is my recording for the show. Hello and welcome to today's show. Today we are talking about how to deal with trolls and spammers as you build your brand. Now we're going to dive into this in quite some depth but I've got some tips that I'm going to share with you that will help you to 
hopefully feel better about it. Like if you're stressed about what if I get trolls or what if somebody spams the comments as I'm talking, I can create this video right now. What if somebody puts a negative comment underneath it? So I'm going to share with you some of the ways that I handle that as I'm building my brand and how I navigate my thinking and my, my, my thought processes and my emotions around it, because that's ultimately the biggest thing that is going to hold you back. And that is to get emotionally attached or to worry or be in anxiety or fear around what if it happens, because what ifs, they can drive you insane. Now, uh, before we continue, I want you to hit the subscribe button right now so that you're the first to hear about my new episodes and training uh, that come out. We've got the How to Build a Brand YouTube channel, which I'm speaking to you on right now, but we also have the One Year No Fear podcast. And that podcast is about being fearlessly visible, being fearlessly seen as you create your brand strategy, as you go out there and you build your brand fearlessly. So if there's anything that comes up for you as you start navigating building your brand and you get nervous or you get into fear at any time, go across to the OneDrop um, channel, which is uh, the sorry, One Year No Fear podcast channel which is all part of One Drop Movement. I have two businesses, very confusing, I know. So we've got One Drop Movement, just very quickly, well, just to explain that now. Uh, one Drop Movement is for uh, business owners and entrepreneurs that are thinking about building something that's way bigger than a business. You're thinking about creating a ripple effect. You are gonna be the one drop and the ripple of impact that you create will likely become a global movement or building a global community. So that's all about building a global brand, something that you, as the influencer, so we'll be guiding and driving. So one drop movement is that side of things. Once you have then worked out what kind of brand it is you want to build and what message you want to say and how you're going to get out to the world, then we have how to build a brand. So it's, I now know what it is that I'm building. Now I need to know how to go and build that as a brand. That's why we've got the two separate um, organizations, two separate um, businesses. So now I've explained that. Let's get back to the training. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to dive into um, how to deal with those trolls if they do come up. So the th first thing that we're going to dive into is what are trolls and what do they do? And why do they do it ultimately? Well, the first thing that I want to dive into here is that usually they will do that because they are looking for attention. They're looking to disrupt they're looking to cause an argument they're looking for banter they want you to hook into it they want you to to you know to for you to bite so that they can then really create an argument or controversy they want to cause something within you they want to tap into your fears and your insecurities to force you to step up and start arguing back at them I say step up, actually, I would say it's a step down to get into that well of vindictiveness and nastiness and low vibrational energy. They want you to climb into the well with them and sit in there and, and get into, into it with them. Spammers, on the other hand, they're usually just promoting something of their own. They're doing it for their own gain. Uh, so it's more of a physical gain for a spammer and more of a mental gain for uh, a troll. So the difference between them, they are very different things. Uh, you might have experienced uh, spammers when they'll put something underneath uh, a post that you put out. I get it all the time. I get people that will, uh, usually men, uh, responding on my posts and they'll say, oh, you're beautiful, I love your smile, can we be friends? A friend requested you, but you, you haven't accepted it yet, Can you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, I just go through and I, I just block them immediately. I've got no physical or emotional or, or spiritual or mental connection to those people that do that. It means nothing to me. It, do, it doesn't even enter my head. Doesn't even, I don't pay attention to it because the minute that you um, add any feeling to it, the minute that you have an emotion around it, the minute that you create a meaning to what it is that they've said is the the minute that you're now on that low vibration with them so so stay in high vibration you are a high vibrational beautiful 
being of light that has a message to give to the world. You are a champion of the people that you serve. And whilst ever you're at that vibration, you can't afford to get into this lower vibration. Do not climb into the well with them. So something that I saw on a movie recently, we watched Elvis, the movie, my husband and I, and, um, and there was a statement, there was a line that was said, and I had to pause the video and, you know, when you, you have to pause something and really think on it and, and type it in, I put it into my notes. And it said this, to achieve truly great things, you'll need to make truly great sacrifices. In this instance, the sacrifice that you are going to have to make if you want to be an influencer, if you want to get out there and make your difference and make your ripple of impact in the world, you are going to have to sacrifice being invisible. You can't be invisible if you're going to be a movement maker, a change maker, a ripple maker, a brand builder, an influencer, a thought leader that goes out there and really not just creates a ripple, but creates an enormous wave of change, either in your industry or for the people that you're serving. If you're going to become a speaker, if you're going to step up and, and share your message with the world, if you're going to take your gift and turn that into your purpose and own your lane with that and be highly visible, take your value out to the world and step into the identity of being somebody that gives so much of a, a, a fuck about people that you serve you care so much about them that anything else is drowned out like you turn the volume up on how you can serve and you turn that volume down on any shit that could happen while you're in the process of serving so you're gonna have to get used to the fact that to be visible you will have to trade invisibility right I believe there's safety in numbers. One of the things that I hear from my uh, members, my Ripple Makers Mastermind members all the time and my brand builders is, oh, but what if someone says something and it challenges me? Well, so what? Um, what if um, What if I'm not good enough? What if what I share isn't good enough? Or what if I forget my content while I'm in the middle of talking? The people that are on the other end, like out of a million people, there might be, four or five people that are trolls or spammers, right? And what you've got to remember is that when you focus on the one and you, fo you focus on fighting the one, you're then taking your attention from serving the million. Like there's a million people out there that need you right now, at least a million people. And as you serve them, you might get one in a million. So for every million people that you serve, there's one person that if you give your attention to them, you're taking your attention off of the people that really deserve it. I once had a, um, I had the, I've got a, a great example of this. I once had this um, teacher who said, you've got to start using email marketing. This is when I had my design agency many years ago. You've got to start using email marketing. And I was like, yeah, I know everyone else is doing it. I know I've got to start using it. And they challenged me. They said, right, you know, you're going to just get a, a hundred people, take a hundred people out of everyone that you know, create a list of a hundred people and send that list an email. So I went and researched the technology. I signed up for the technology. I got all these hundred people that I'd met through networking or business events. So there were people that I knew. Um, so I felt very safe in sending them an email. So I put a hundred in there. Um, I actually think there was 104. I have a memory around that because my lucky number is four. So I think I added four to it. <laughs> so I did 104 and I got, there were um, there were three, three or four actually. It was really interesting now me thinking on this now. Um, there were three or four people came back and said, remove me from your list. I didn't ask to be added to your list. Um, you know, I, I think it's horrible that you've added me to this list. Please delete me immediately or whatever, you know, and they, they weren't nice in the way that they said it. And that frightened me so much because at that time I cared so much about what people thought of me that I, I literally, I was crushed by those three or four responses. I didn't send out another email for nearly two years because of the fear of what would people think of me if I, if I did that again. And then I was at a conference 
uh, uh, two years after I sent this email, and this is why it's got a two year timeline. So I was at a conference about two years later and um, Dan Kennedy, who's like the grandfather, the godfather of uh, email marketing, he was there and he was talking about email marketing and I'm listening to him and I'm thinking, yeah, well, it's all right for you because, you know, all of the d disassociations with it, it's all right for you because, you know, you're great at it and I'm not. And I was really like comparing my sp myself to this. Um, and then at the end, I thought, no, you know what, I'm going to go up and ask him because he invited people to go and ask questions. So I go up and I say to him, you know, like this email marketing thing, I know that it's good for other businesses, but I tried it a couple of years ago and it didn't work. And he said, all right, well, tell me what happened. So I told him what happened. And he said, how selfish are you? And it really took me back. It, like I, I took a step back. I said, sorry, I wasn't expecting him to say that. He said, how selfish are you? You sent it to 104 people. Only four of them asked you to remove them from the list. How did you serve the other hundred? Shit. <laughs> he said, there's a hundred people that were sat there two years ago who were happy to receive it, who would have loved to have continued receiving your support and advice and your guidance and on how to do whatever it is that you do in your industry. And yeah, maybe some of those, they might have got fed up with the emails you're sending and you might have had three or four more. He said, but even if that went down to 10% of that list and you were communicating with 10 people every single time you sent an email out that made a difference to them, that's 10 more lives you could have made an impact on. You have no idea what else they would have bought from you, how many other people they would have told about you and all the other magic that could have come from just those 10 people out of 104 that would have happily helped you to build your brand and would have been ambassadors for you and I was just so taken aback by it and I thought my god you are so right and and I, I went back and I immediately started emailing people again and now when someone unsubscribes from my email list I love it because I think great you are somebody that I'm not wasting my time emotions energy or money on right? You, you, you go find the person that's right for you. I'm only interested in serving those that I can make a difference to and that we're a good match for each other. And so from that perspective, I had to sacrifice being invisible and I had to sacrifice the, the emotions and meaning that I was giving to people unsubscribing or people saying what they were. I had to disassociate myself with that because I'm not focused on those kind of low vibrational comments. I haven't got time for them. I don't know how long I'm going to live. And if I spend even one minute focused on that, that's another minute that I'm going to regret having taken that away from the people that really deserve it. So you're going to have to make sacrifices, make that decision about what you are willing to sacrifice to make that change that you want to make in people's lives. If you're going to soar, you are going to have to release all the baggage that's weighing you down. You cannot continue to fly and fly and fly if you're constantly having to balance with the positive and the negative and the positive and the negative and the what ifs and the, you know, how can I you know, th this is something that you need to feel like you must do. Like if, if I feel like I must go and make that impact, if I feel like I was born to do something bigger and greater, if I feel like I was meant to be the voice of change for this thing that I have a voice for, this message that I have inside me that is burning to get out, then I have to choose the message. I, and and the, the other thing about it is when you disattach meaning and emotion from it, what you also do is you put yourself focused on the audience instead of focused on yourself. The minute that you give meaning and attachment to it, you start going inwards and you start reflecting. Did I say something? Could I have done something to have offended them? It doesn't matter. If somebody is offended by what you say, that's their problem, not yours. <laughs> right? It's their problem, not yours. So the other tip that I, that I want to give you is you, you can choose to ignore them. You can choose not to engage with them because they are doing it for attention. But if you ignore them or if you have an admin who's sitting there as you're, if you're doing it live, for example, um, you know, you can, you can pay $5 to an admin to sit there and make sure that they're also logged into your account. And if somebody puts something negative, they can be deleting them the minute, the second that they appear, they can be bounced straight back out of that comment thread. If you're really worried or nervous about it, 
personally, I would pay an admin person $5 a day, every day at the same time every day, just go in and check, remove anything that, that isn't worth the con conversation and the comments. Just remove anything just and block them if you want to. So you can remove them, you can block them. So if you are on a certain social media platform, you can um, take that and you can turn that into something that um, becomes a block, it becomes, um, you know, paralyzing their ability to be able to um, comment on anything you do in future. But the only thing with that is it doesn't stop them from going and creating another fake account or a fake profile and then doing it again. So like, I'm really a fan of the first tip. <laughs> the third tip is you could just make everything that you do totally invisible. It can only be visible to the people that you trust and you you only allow people to see the things that you want them to see. But that for me isn't an option. So in my mind, tip three is that you've got to be fearless, unstoppable, relentless, consistent in your message. Be persistent with the way you get it out. Be formidable, be unstoppable. Be somebody that cares about making that difference in the lives of others so much that you haven't got time, energy, or money to be wasting on them because your time is money. So for every second that you focus on something negative, that's a second that you weren't making an impact. And you get paid for the impact that you make as a speaker or a change maker, a service provider. You get paid when you deliver a service, right? You get paid when you deliver the result, maybe. Now, however it is that you get paid, if you get paid when you show up, and when, if you get paid when you put courses out, if you get paid when you're making online programs, if you get paid for the, the results that you help people to make, then you haven't got time to be focused on the people that are making shitty, stupid little comments. Because if they make one comment and you even hook into it, if you bite into it, that's it. They know they've got you and they'll probably spam you for every time you go live in future. If you do what I did the very first time and only time, fortunately, touch wood, that somebody's ever said something when I just laughed and uh, and I was like, yes, I've got my first troll. It's brilliant. Now I know I really stand for something. Thank you. Thank you to the person that's out there that's trolling me right now. I love you. I am so grateful to you and I'm thankful to you. I feel like 10 men right now. Yes, I finally made it. I've got my own troll. And I made a joke out of it and I took the mickey out of it so much they didn't get the attention they wanted. Like they didn't get the argument. I just, I joked about it and I moved on and they never bothered me again. So be consistent and be yourself because when you're being yourself, they can't attack that because you being yourself, full and complete and courageous, like there's an armor there. There's an armor that they cannot get through. So guys, if this has been something that has helped you to think a little bit differently today, if you're now thinking, do you know what? I can be fearless and I can go out there and I can build my brand and make a difference to people, then you can follow me. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel, How to Build a Brand. Or you can come and join me on the One Year No Fear podcast, which is over on Spotify, we're on Amazon, we're on Apple Music. Go and go into the whatever platform you use, type in One Year No Fear and you'll find me. And that's where I talk specifically about being fearless in building a brand, being visible, raising your credibility, using social media, like all the channels that you could use, the things you could create, the things that you do. Uh, it's my job. I see my job to be the change maker behind the change makers. So I'm here packing your parachute, reminding you of how bloody brilliant you are and that you don't have freaking time to take on any of that shit from anyone else. OK, you haven't got time for that shit anymore. I hope that you have enjoyed today's show and I want to leave you with a question. I always love to ask questions before we go. What is really holding you back from being more visible? If there's anything holding you back other than that, you know, we've covered trolls and spammers today. Like you can't use that excuse anymore. You can make excuses or you can build a brand. You can make excuses or you can make a difference. You can make an impact and make more income as a result, or you can uh, make yourself as invisible as possible and never make that change, get to the end of your life and fiercely regret not having started now. 
I really, really hope that there is nothing holding you back. But if there is something holding you back, I'd love to hear about it. You can either put it in the comments below this video or send me a message. If you don't want other people to, to hear it or to see it, then send me a message. You can contact me on uh, Facebook Messenger. I'm Sammy One, One Drop Blindell. Or you can contact me on Instagram, Sammy Blindell. You'll find me. Um, so if you send me a message, I will do my very best to respond. I get a lot of messages every day, but I do aim... I intend to respond to each and every one. So if you've got something that is holding you back, message me about it. Maybe I'll be able to support you in shifting that going forward. Be relentless, be consistent, be persistent in your pursuit of making that impact, that ripple of impact that you and only you were born to make and go and have an amazing day. I'll see you on the next show. So as you can see, I clap when I want to end things. And the reason I do that is because on the audio, it then creates a spike in the audio. So I'm very quickly able to see where I need to edit. I don't have to listen to the whole thing to find out where it is that I need to edit it. Because it's video, I'm looking straight at the camera. I'm not looking at myself. And you can see the difference, can't you? You can feel the difference on the other end. I'm now looking at myself delivering the video. I'm now looking at the camera. So make sure when you're creating your videos that you're looking at the camera, not looking at yourself. You saw that I was um, showing the tips and I've got like seven, eight, nine and 10. I didn't mean to have that on there, but you know what? Perfection is poverty. I'm gonna post this video anyway. That doesn't matter to me. What matters more is that I'm making the impact. Remember, perfection is poverty. It will not only keep you poor, because it will stop you from getting things out there quickly and serving people. It will keep the people that you can serve poor as well because they're not seeing you. Now I'm going to end the recording. And that is now going to go into, I don't need to give any feedback. That's going to, so I'm going to press return to dashboard. And now I can click on past. I can see my broadcasts that I've, I've put out there in the past. I can click on videos and you can see that my video is now preparing itself for me to be able to download it. And when I do want to download it, so if I click on those three dots, as you can see, I can download the video. I can trim it so I can even edit it in here. If I want to send something out live, I can do that. And I can schedule a broadcast as well. So if you create your videos in here and then decide you want to share them a bit kind of like a webinar where you, you know, or a Facebook live, a live stream, you can make it look like a proper live stream. So if I schedule that, it will come up into whatever group or whatever, as you can see, that's dealt with very quickly, right? So I've got that as a 45 minute recording that's available pretty much uh, within a minute of me ending it. Um, so you can see how fast it does it. But what I can do then is schedule that to go out in a group or on my timeline and it will have live on it. So it'll look like I'm live. So that's a way of you being able to create content and repurpose it and schedule it. And you can be there on the other end of it. You can be typing comments. And if you create content, you, you can say on the content, knowing that it's going to be, um, you know, put out there as a, a replay as such, but it's going to feel like it's live. You can be saying, look, you know, I, I'm going to be taking questions after. So once we've finished going live, make sure you put all of your comments in the comments underneath this video. And I'll come back and I'll make sure that I either create videos to answer your comments or if you've got questions, um, I will answer them. I promise you I'll answer them after we've finished going live. So you can then set that up so that people aren't commenting and then saying, well, why aren't you responding to my messages? So there's ways that you can do that. Right, now we are going to go across iMovie and I'm going to show you how to um, finish it off. Okay, see you there. All right, so there you go. You now know step-by-step step how to use StreamYard to deliver your own training. And as I said, you can record it and stream it live. So you're getting live feedback at the same time or delivering it for an audience. So it feels like you've got someone to show up for. So you could do it that way. I know that I am best when I know that I've got somebody to show up for. Otherwise, it just gets put off and put off. <laughs> and I perfect things and get into procrastination. So the very best thing you can do is set a, a, a date with a deadline and either deliver it yourself or have someone to deliver it for. And when it comes to 
exporting your video and you've got everything done you can download your video you can either edit it straight in StreamYard or you can pull it into something like iMovie which is what I'm using now just to finish off this video training I hope that this training has been useful for you if it has I'd love to know in the comments below you can reach me either on Facebook Messenger at Sammy One Drop Blindell. You could reach out to me on Instagram or LinkedIn. My name is the same across all of them other than Sammy One Drop Blindell on uh, Facebook. So uh, do stay in touch. If you've loved what I've taught you today, make sure you subscribe so that you're always the first to hear any new trainings that I bring up. And if you've got any questions that you'd like me to answer via video and create more trainings like this, I can answer your questions directly. If you want to know how to build your brand, how to expand your business, how to become the master or guru of uh, becoming visible and being seen, then do reach out. That's exactly what we do. I'm Sammy Blindell, the brand builder, and I'm here to hold your hand as you build your brand. Take care. Have a wonderful day. And I'll look forward to seeing you on the next training, if not before. Bye.